let's get custom as we're approaching the end of our little course here. We have learned quite a bit on this journey, and we have one last bit to comment on. How do we take this default stuff, which I told you was one of my gripes with Passport, its default error handling system, and the fact we now have to write more code to fix a problem we just gave ourselves when we didn't have to use Passport beforehand, we had total control over our error handling. How do I take this authenticate function, which is an express middleware, and alter it to error handle, well, a little bit differently? Let's see, shall we? We need to unfortunately change the functionality of how this works. It has a callback syntax, surprise, surprise, that changes a little bit of how it works. So what we're going to do is make a new file inside of our middlewares folder. We'll call it off.mw.ts for some nice organization. Inside of here, I will need the following. We're gonna be using the authenticate function from Passport, like we've been using so far, passport.authenticate. We are going to well, you know what? I'll tell you why we'll need those imports when we need them. How about that? We're going to be exporting a top-level function. We can call it whatever we want. We can call it the token checkpoint or token check or something like that or check token, has token. You can call it pizza for all that I really care, but just make something intuitive and meaningful. It is going to be an express middleware, and there's a couple different ways we can write what that does. If I'm not mistaken, there is literally an entire wrapping function called the... Uh, request handler, but that does have some opinions on how a request handler is written. But at the end of the day, we have to remember that these are the three normal arguments that any middleware is gonna need. Intercept the request, maybe send a response if it needs to, otherwise move to the next step. That's what we're looking at here. And our goal is to come back to pizza.ts and replace this authenticate JWT with our new token check function so we can get rid of the passport import and simply use our token check in place of that. So remember, if this doesn't call next, it never goes to this callback and never runs this code. So that's why we have to make sure that next is included in this middleware rather than our endpoints like we haven't been using so far. So I will simply import the request, the response, and the next function types from express. So now I can simply come down here and strong type each one as I need. There we go. And that's how you can strong type that, uh, those arguments individually as you need to across your applications. The next goofy tidbit is that this function isn't going to return anything. Rather, it's going to take and feed that rec res next into the authenticate JWT middleware we used to be using where we're gonna switch it to the callback style signature. Now, this function has to execute and return something for it to know, does it move to the next step or not? So at the moment here, what function are we executing? We are writing the JWT middleware that used to be placed right over here that would intercept RecRes next by default. But now we have to kind of pipe them into this function. So y'all remember IIFE's immediately invoked function expressions? Well, that's what this is. We're gonna make sure we invoke this authenticate function with those rec res next arguments. And that's what that syntax is going to look like. Took me a hot minute to figure that out when I was a student in y'all's shoes, so big brain pro tip from me to you. Take these rec res next functions, invoke them to pass them directly into this authenticate function that's now using this new callback structure. That's how it's going to work. Okay? And from there, you get to do whatever you want. At the end of the day, no matter what, bar none, it's going to have to move to the next step regardless of what's happening. Okay? It has to call next because if it doesn't, it'll never get down to this code over here in the pizza router. Now we can handle as we see fit. Oh, well, it would help, Luke, if you told them what the callback arguments are. There are going to be three callback arguments, typically in most of these authenticate strategies. An error if one had been called, meaning if done error is called in either one of these, done error will come over here as an error. So if there is an error, we're going to call next with error. But why not just send a response with an error code inside of it? Well, we already have that part written. If it calls next error, it gets daisy chained to this callback handler right here. And this handler will catch that error that we call next with, 
log what the error is, and send a message telling us we suck. So that part's taken care of. Next, we had talked about inf or it has a user argument. And that user is what's serialized when we call either done null user found or done null payload up here. And it gets daisy chained into here. If the user password's there, it deletes it. And then finally, this passport serialized user calls done null user. And this user right here is represented by that argument there. So before we call next, we're gonna have to make sure that the rec user now, before it would serialize it automatically for us, but because we're using this new custom callback structure, we have to account for the fact that we need to serialize it ourselves. Hey, rec.user property, take on the value of whatever user we have here. Now we have to make sure that if something fails, we handle the problem or the error. So we can say if there is no user, like if the user is undefined or something went wrong, that means something didn't validate correctly, and we should probably redirect to a login page to say, Try again, right? Maybe something went wrong. Maybe the user is banned and something went incorrect because of that. So that's some things to take into consideration. So we wanna make sure that this, also we need the return keyword here. We wanna make sure that this function also stops at the return keyword and change it, change, chains it up like that. Same thing for this, we can set a custom status of 401, you're unauthorized with a JSON message of, uh, login again or redirect to login. You could do a uh, redirect to login. Now there are some cases where you could do like literally a res dot redirect as well, but it's gonna depend on how your app works. This could be totally fine. Maybe it redirects to the login route, which makes our React component show the login page. Maybe you're making your server uh, client side agnostic, meaning it doesn't necessarily know it's gonna be redirecting a login page in a web app. Maybe the server is dealing with an iOS or uh, Android, like a native app, in which case redirecting to forward slash login is not gonna help you. But a message like this, you can catch on the front end, whether you're in a web app or a native app. And if you get this message, make that app then forcefully uh, re-navigate itself if you need to. So that's just good to know that kind of information. And then finally, we had talked about it at one point in time, but never talked more about it, was this thing called info, right? Where does that come from? We're gonna say if there is info of some kind, then we need to maybe set a status code of 401 and send a JSON message that will come from info.message like that. Whatever the info message is, we're simply gonna chain it in as a response and if we send a response, which remember .json is sending a response, it's gonna stop the function here. It's never gonna try and do this because it probably caused a problem and it'll never call next because it doesn't need to go to the next step if there is no user or there is no info. But the reason we did let it go to the next step on error is because again, we have some more globalized error handling out here. And there's actually an even cleaner way to do that, but we'll leave it for that for, there, for now. But if y'all recall, I had talked about and the possibility down here for example, of our user found uh, login local strategy of passing that third argument right here that could have a message property like that. And if we happen to do that, this done function, that is where that info object and message property come from. So you can set up some custom done callbacks right here, or the default messages aren't too terribly bad. And I'll show you how we can actually test those right now. First things first. I'm gonna come back over to Postman because by this point, everything here seems to be checking out fine. It's being exported. I see no TypeScript errors. My pizza router now uses the token check customized middleware that takes authenticate JWT and custom handles its responses. Let's go check it out. So I'm going to log in. We've been always using our test at test.com, but from the last video, we should have made a new login for register at test.com. So I'm gonna go ahead and try logging in as register. It worked, so my login worked after registering a new account. Copy this token, paste it, and as long as it's existing and it belongs to someone and we wrote it and it's not expired, we should now get pizza time for a register at test.com now. And check it out. Look, that pizza router is scaling to a new user. That's what I'm talking about, let's go. But let's run some tests. Because remember, our old error handling would simply say unauthorized if we screwed something up. Let's delete a letter, bam. 
redirect to login because our user failed to serialize and it's actually in the order above that. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to move that user serialization below info because info will give us a more specific message, more specific error message of what happened to the token. And I wanna make sure the user is one step above actually serializing the user, so my bad. Let's try that again. I wanna redirect, I reorganize those if statements and look at the error now, invalid signature. So now we have that info.message property giving us some more customized error handling. And you can also catch specific cases. If info.message equals 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 string value invalid signature, handle it with your own custom message instead. So you can take it one step further now that you know how to find these custom error messages and begin, well, customizing them even further if you want to. Let's fix the problem on the token. There we go. Let's remove the token, see what the error message is. Makes sense to me. And now we actually haven't tested an expired token. So here's how we're gonna do that. Um, I'm gonna stop my server so I can restart my environment variables and make sure everything's in sync. Over here, I'm gonna put 15s for 15 seconds on my expiration time. Restart my server. We're gonna log in to that register account again, get a new token that should only have a 15 second expiring time. So we're gonna do this kind of quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that token field out from here. We're gonna log in. This token is only good for 15 seconds. Let's confirm that it currently works. Perfect, it's working, it's working, it's working. I'm gonna keep clicking for the next whatever number of seconds until we get an error. Do, 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 hey! And that right there is an error that you wanna familiarize yourself with. Because in stateless authentication, a lot of the times you have two tokens, an access token and a refresh token, right? And that workflow, if you ever see an article or a series that talks about that, or if I make an advanced auth concepts that's not part of the course and something you learn after you finish and while you're trying to find that job and improving your skills, this right here is gonna be something you need to familiarize yourself with. So that's why I really wanted to add this custom callback signature of Passport and show y'all how to wind up at this. Because if you know your token's expired, right, you can ask the server to give you a new one without making your user log back in again. That way we can keep our token times short and make sure that our users aren't having to log in every other day. So there's, there's some cool things you could do with that for purely stateless authentication. And believe it or not, I'm gonna change that back to 15 days and I don't know if it's gonna restart with those environment variables. I'm gonna make sure though, I typically like to restart my server anyway if I, uh, if I do change environment variables just because I don't want things to fall out of sync by mistake, which they're prone to anyway. But let's make sure if I log back in, nothing's changed or broken again. And get a new token, paste it here, bam. Yeah, pizza time. So that's it. That kind of rounds out what y'all need to know to complete the labs for this authentication course. If you're in Gravity, you'll have labs available as well as a reference material that I need to add a couple things to now that we've talked more about them in the README. And the labs will ask you to authenticate and authorize your blog labs. I would advise copying along in a fresh boilerplate that I've been doing everything so far, then doing it again for your blog lab, maybe go and change up your chirper lab to do that, include it on your final projects and so on and so forth. And after writing it several more times, I promise it begins to make more sense. But I don't wanna keep going any further because this course is already getting kind of long and you have labs to do and you have rest of the course to finish after this as well. So I hope you all enjoyed this. And if you have further comments or questions, always feel free to leave comments in Gravity down here beneath the video or in our Discord channels or what have you. But this is what I would call the fundamentals of auth that we wanna know. And I'll see y'all in an optional video coming up next that talks about converting to stateful workflow instead of stateless. Ta-ta for now.